Hello, welcome back to the channel. And today we'll be talking about the new basketball coach from the University of Michigan Wolverines, Dusty May. Uh, I know it's been uh, a few days since the hiring has happened, but obviously with all the March Madness stuff going on, you kind of might have gotten lost in the weeds. And plus, I wanted to take a few days to really assess this hire, wait to the press conference, which was earlier today, and kind of talk about it from there. So, uh, Dusty May, he is obviously the new head coach at Michigan. He went to Indiana. He is 47 years old. Uh, obviously currently of Michigan, formerly of Florida Atlantic. He's an assistant at Florida, Louisiana Tech, UAB, Murray State, and Eastern Michigan. So back in Michigan after uh, being out there in Eastern. Um, and um, yeah, he made a Final Four, obviously, last year. It was pretty much his entire coaching resume, I would say, would be last year. Um, you know, he was pretty consistent at FAU and then, you know, got a good run in them. They uh, were, uh, I think they won the Atlantic last season. Um, American, excuse me. Yep, they did. And then uh, 17, 11 and seven in the conf, or eighteen and two in the conference. Excuse me, thirty-five and four overall. Um, beat um, who was it? They beat Minis uh, Memphis in the first round. FDU in the second round. Obviously, <laughs> got away with not having to face Purdue. So good on them there. And then um, what was it? I think it was like Tennessee, and then Kansas State, and then they lost to San Diego State, I believe. Um, and then who lost to UConn? So um, you know, what technically I would say fourth. It's pretty good. Um, you, you know, he's now over at Michigan after this season losing to um, who were they losing championship game? Lost to UAB. No, they lost to, to Temple in the eight or the the American quarters, and then um, Temple lost to UAB, and then they lost to uh, Northwestern in the first round in one of the crazier games. But um, you know, he's four and two in the NBA tournament or the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, winning what four and one last two year seasons ago and oh and one this year and um now he moves to michigan making uh three and a half million dollars annually and john beeline tweeted about it today he said uh, it is an exciting to see dusty may as the men's basketball coach at michigan he has great success as head coach and assistant has worked hard for many years and fabulous opportunity anytime he asks i'll be able to help him congrats dusty Anna and family hashtag go blue very interesting um i like that the old players are starting to get involved i know nick stauskas came back to twitter he commented about how bad the program was beforehand, and now he's loving that there's a new hire in town. And it seems like Dusty May's really got everyone on his side. Um, you know, the, the hiring itself went down with Ward, you know, kind of fumbling around. You know, they announced Dusty May to, uh, to Louisville, and everyone freaked out, including Ward, who got him and Beeline on a plane down to Boca Grande. Uh, not Boca Grande, what is it? Um, Coral Gables, excuse me. And um, they got the job done. Um, you know, him and uh, Beeline hit it off for hours. So great job there. Uh, FAU, you know, this season, you can look at some of their stuff here. Um, they were, what do we got here? You know, they had a bunch of wins early. Obviously, they uh, ended the season with a loss of Temple. Um, they had some pretty big wins, including Texas a and is a good one. Um, they beat Arizona, which was crazy in an overtime game. Lost to Illinois. Um, you know, so they're zero two against Big Ten teams, I believe, and then you know did pretty well in the conference. This loss against Temple is brutal, but um, you know the loss against Bryant early is tough as well. But you look here, there's a lot of guys leading the stuff here, right? You got Elijah Martin, Vlad, uh, Vlad Golden, and John L. Davis are the guys leading the scoring for pretty much all of the games here, and those are the three players that Michigan is you know rumored to be interested in grabbing. So you got Elijah Martin. John L. Davis and Vlad Golden. So looking at those guys, we can see what we got here. Uh, junior guard, um, we have Elijah Martin, uh, 13 points, five and a half or five point eight rebounds, one point six assists, forty-one percent field goal, which is pretty good as well. Um, overall, really good stuff this season. Um, when you look at his splits, he was, you know, thirty-six percent from three, which is really good. Um, and then, you know, good from the free throw line and pretty good overall shooting. Um, you know, six two is a guard is a little bit undersized for the big 10, but he's a freak athlete. This guy can jump out the gym. He can guard a lot of positions. You know, he is limited with the size, but again, at 210, 62, he's a bit bigger. So that helps a lot. The best scorer on the team would be John L. Davis. This guy could go to the league. You know, it'd be tough to see what ends up happening there. 18.2 uh, points, six with three boards, three assists, four, uh, almost 50% from the field. Um, you know, he was 45% from three in the year. Didn't take as many. Um, as Elijah did, but you can see he's a good four year guy going from three, six, 12, 18, you know, pretty much doubling every year. Obviously, not 13 to 18 or 14 to 18, but it's tough, to, you know, you're not gonna be averaging 28 a game. Um, but he's a guy that you can probably play as like a two guard, you know, ball dominant two type guard, um, you know, similar like a Caleb Love type guy where he's, you know, he's gonna shoot a lot of shots, he's gonna <laughs> dribble the ball a lot, he's gonna have the ball in his hands all the time. 
Um, but again, 6'4", 203 from Gary, Indiana. So he knows the region, which is great. Um, but yeah, just overall a really good player. Um, going to be special, I think, at Michigan if he ends up making the jump. But I would not be surprised if he does what a few guys have been doing. He'll enter the NBA draft and the portal, and we'll see what happens from there. And finally, we have the player I'm most excited to see on Michigan because it seems like he's the most likely. You got Vladislav Golden, uh, the big Vlad, the guy that everyone's been seeing. Uh, you know, when you watch FAU, he's, who's that huge Russian dude? That'd be Vlad Golden. A uh, little skinny at only 240, but this guy's awesome. Great on the defensive end. Um, unbelievable um, you know, defensive wind shares, stats like that. Third in the country in field goal percentage, which is unbelievable. 16 points, seven boards. Not much more you can ask for. I don't even think he attempted a three in the season. You know, shoot, shot pretty well from free throw. 66 is not terrible. Had a really good game against Northwestern in the tournament, um, you know, with four blocks, a steal, only one foul and one turnover, which is good. He, he does stay out of foul trouble. I mean, two fouls a game for a big is great. Granted, you're playing in the American and not playing in the Big Ten, where I'm sure you'll get uh, a lot more fouls and physicality. But overall, really good stuff. And I'm excited to see what he does in the, in the maze and blue, you know, barring something crazy. Uh, and then the next two are the guys looking at um, in the portal that probably have interest in Michigan. Uh, first up is Connor Sijian. Um, did a lot last year. Um, and one of the best players. I think he was freshman of the year in the Big Ten, if not uh, on the first team, obviously. But 40%, 35 from three, 88 from the line, you know, 17 points, only a foul a game, half a steal some rebounding. So he's again, a, a good two guard type thing. And, and with dusty may, he likes to play fast and loose and have a lot of guard play with, you know, a big center down below. So he'd be a good option of his three guard lineup. Is he good on the defensive end? Not at all. Can you hide him on defense? Most likely, but he had a big drop off this year coming off the bench in production, you know, going down 20 minutes, you know, way down in points. You know, I think AJ store coming in kind of messed up some of that and, you know, him getting some runs. So uh, I would not be surprised to see if a CG and uh, doesn't end up going to Michigan. He's a Michigan fan growing up. So um, it'll be good to see, you know, everyone's been talking about how Michigan's got looser transfer restrictions and uh, better uh, NIL and, and, and funding like that. This is a great case here. This kid's a Michigan fan. I'm sure it'll take a discount to get here, but it'd be really good to see it happen. And then finally, a good three or four, depending on how you want to play him, is Trey Townsend, um, the other guy in Oakland. Not Jack Golke, but he's the other guy on the team. Uh, really good stretch down the season here. He had you know 38 points and 11 boards and five assists against uh, Milwaukee in the championship game for Horizon. 17 against uh, Kentucky, and then 30 and 13 against NC State. Was absolutely balling down there from Oxford, Michigan, obviously. So you know, pretty close to campus. Um, 6'6", 228, uh, did some really good work in his few seasons over in Oakland. Um, you know, he would be a fifth year guy coming in using his COVID year. Um, you know, it, right now you probably could make like a, a two way roster G league thing potentially in the league. But you know, if you put up similar production at a Michigan level program, you'll be getting like late day two draft calls, maybe even earlier. Cause we're kind of seeing a move towards maybe more old and established players in the NBA, um, really kind of take the face of the league. So, um, not like the league, but like guys getting drafted, you know, three or four year guys that are making instant impacts. I mean, like you look at the Pistons, you got Marcus Sasser doing that. Um, you look across the league at like a Jalen Brunson, right? He had multiple years in college, late first round draft pick. Same with Josh Hart. You know, a lot of those Villanova guys kind of getting some run. I'm sure Dalton Connect would be a similar story this year. A guy looking like a lottery pick that's, you know, it's his fourth or fifth season in college. So. But yeah, overall, I mean, there's no not as much smoke with Trey Townsend. I know Michigan's been interested, and obviously him in state would be great. Get a big pay bump for his awesome season at Oakland, including in March Madness. Um, but the last thing I would do here, I'm gonna think if uh, this will work here real quick. Let's see. Is looking at the sheet here for um, what Florida Atlantic's like season overall looked like. They were two and two against Quad One, but you look down here, super efficient offense, 16th in the country in offensive efficiency. Defense obviously got to work on it, especially when you're in the American. Really good shooting numbers here. Um, good rate stuff as well. Tempo, they're not super fast, but they go in transition a lot. Um, they do turn it over a little bit in, uh, you know, in that. But positive rebounding as well is a really good thing here. So, um, you know, pretty good against the spread, middle of the road, over under. You know, not great in the conference against the spread, but, you know, they're favored probably, I guess, almost every game. So that, you know, is a little bit of an outlier stat. But overall, you know, things that stick out to you. Pretty good Kempom for a bad, you know, for a quote unquote bad conference, which is bad conference, but good home record, which is great. I mean, Michigan, you look at many times this season, it was more away fans than there were home fans. 
uh, at their home games. But yeah, a really efficient offense, which will help um, in the conference in the Big Ten with a lot more defense. Obviously, you know, these numbers probably take a little bit of a bump down from there. But overall, that's what I have uh, for this video. Um, I, I'm really interested to see what happens the next few days with the staff filling out and um, some portal acquisitions and offers um, and roster attention. And there's still a few guys on the roster. You got George Washington. Um, and I'm trying to even think who else on the team. You got uh, George Washington. Um, well, he's in the portal, but you know, he's potentially interested. Uh, you've got Will Cheddar. You've got Jace Howard. You've got Namari Burnett. I think Burnett and Cheddar would fit really well in the system. Even with uh, uh, George Washington, we get more run with there being three guard sets. So, uh, no more three power forwards back to three guards um, and beelines super involved with this program. Likely, you know, you got public people talking about NAL, the Valiants tweeting about Michigan NAL basketball. Everything's coming up great for basketball. Right now. It couldn't be off to a better start. I know uh, I have been tough on Dusty May in the past, along with uh, Ant and other guys I follow on, um, you know, kind of calling him, I guess you would say a, uh, a uh, final four merchant last year, but um, overall, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see the future of Michigan basketball. Um, crazy off season for Michigan overall with a, with, you know, not only the football coach, but also the basketball coach being new. So, um, yeah, excited to get some more content going forward. Um, I believe I'm about to record a baseball podcast with Weldon. Um, so that'll be on the channel probably tomorrow. It should be out tonight. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, please like, and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.